uh, Hillary has been lengthening her excuses as to why uh, she lost the election. She didn't really lose the election. It was stolen from her uh, by, I think it's up to 24 different excuses she has now. Number 24 is content farms in Macedonia. And uh, as I said, uh, my grandfather was a uh, Macedonian content farmer. And uh, we often think about, you know, gathering on the porch and recalling the old days on the Macedonian con- I never thought, he never thought that the old content farmers he left behind in Macedonia would one day steal the U.S. presidential election. They are gnarled, hardworking Macedonian We're not peasants. entirely the sure how you pronounce the forward slash from your computer keyboard five times in a row. Perhaps, but that is apparently what the government of Zoranzaev considered calling Macedonians, at least for one day. It seems that the bureaucrats in charge of issuing birth certificates issued some with that forward slash five or maybe six times in a row in the space on the form where one would normally write or type the word Macedonian. Naturally, there was an outrage, and the government issued an explanation blaming quote-unquote technical issues. Or is it that simple? Considering all of the quote-unquote issues regarding the name, the identity, and more of Macedonia and the Macedonians that have happened since Zora and Zayev took power, one could posit a deliberate pattern here. In the meantime, there is a definite and deliberate pattern to the growing Boki 13 slash Katica Yaneva scandal with new information and names coming out daily. And yet the government and many, but not all, of the Western elites refuse to confront this growing scandal, probably out of fear that it will bring down the government of Zoran Zayev and derail their plans. We'll discuss all of this and more on this episode of the Macedonian Content Farmers Podcast. I'm Jason Miko, coming to you from the center of Tucson, Arizona. And this is Tritin Shalimanov calling in from Skopje, the capital of the Macedonians and of the citizens of the Republic of North Macedonia. As, uh, as, as well as the as, as as well as the f- 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 <laughs> yeah. f- f- people, so <laughs> exactly, um, <laughs> and quite a few stray dogs actually. as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, it 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 uh, it would be funny if it wasn't so sad. Mm. And uh, so so this uh, we we start. I started in the the monologue with this um, the, the 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 forward slash on your computer. It's as simple as that. And and uh, these forms that were issued uh, some some folks on social media apparently receive these forms in the, the yep. birth certificates that are issued by... Who, who does that? Is it state um, statistical office? Or? It's, uh, I think they're affiliated with the Interior Ministry. They're called the Bureau for uh, Matic Niknigi, for issuing uh, birth certificates, basically, and okay. death certificates. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so in, the, in the space on the form where one would normally write or type the word Macedonian, yeah. uh, it, was, it wasn't blank, actually. It was with the, the forward oh, yeah. slash, which, I, again, we don't know how to pronounce, but I, I, I think we'll just go with... <laughs> anyway, um, I, I saw a number of people on Twitter, including me and you, Svetin, that uh, put that in addition to our, our, our name on our Twitter handle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, the... Uh, and this was, obviously growing backlash uh this was yesterday we're and i should mention we're recording this on uh let's see today is wednesday august 7 2019 this will probably drop tomorrow so this happened yesterday on tuesday august 6 and uh so the government issued a or the 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 bureau or the government somebody issued a statement blaming it on quote-unquote technical issues is that correct uh yeah uh i suppose they uh, were scared how to proceed uh, they, somebody, I suppose, told them to stop using Macedonian. But, you know, bu- bureaucrats being bureaucrats, they didn't know what to do. So I, they issued for a few days, apparently, these uh, forward slash documents. And then uh, today they said, no, uh, this was a technical issue, just like uh, uh, Tamara's, uh, Tamara technically or, you know, uh, carelessly forgot to sing the <laughs> relevant part of the anthem and... Uh, a whole bunch of other uh, curious uh, technicalities we had in the past few in the past period and they said that as of today they're going to use citizenship uh, macedonian one forward slash republic of north macedonia <laughs> oh so we've gone down from five forward slashes to one forward slash now. yeah they've been uh, we're slashed. making progress <laughs> we've slashed the forward slashes well, and this is, of course, and the, what you just said there, uh, Macedonian forward slash citizen of the Republic of, quote unquote, North Macedonia, that's consistent with what's in the so-called PRESPA agreement mm-hmm. that was agreed to by Zoran Zayev and the, uh, the, the, the former, 
I should put place the state, the former Greek government, um, which of course still it, it makes no sense. Uh, the word, the descriptor is Macedonian, and that's all it should be. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you mentioned Tamara there, and um, it it and as I mentioned in the opening monologue, I said, is it that simple? It seems to be a deliberate pattern of events. So we we take the the Ford slash issue on the birth certificates. We take what you said about Tamara at the uh, U.S. Embassy Fourth uh, of July party, forgetting to sing about. Uh, I think it was she for, she left out the the verse about Godse Delchev and Pita Guli and Yanis mm -hmm. and uh, There was an event uh, a few months ago, I think, where there was a Greek a visiting Greek uh, diplomat, and they didn't bother to play the Macedonian national anthem. If you recall that event, mm, yeah. Um, there were a couple of other things as well, and. And I think all of it just points to a deliberate pattern. Um, and and, and w if there's a deliberate pattern, then then that makes it not as the um, the the ministry or the uh, the uh, issuing um, um, office within the government say you know when they said it's a, a technical issue. That's not a technical issue. It's not it's not a mistake as Tamara said or as the U.S. Embassy said, etc. It's this is a deliberate pattern with a deliberate intent to degrade and debase the Macedonian identity and the Macedonian name. Am yeah, I we, right on that or yeah, am I wrong? Yeah, we have daily humiliations, uh, especially now that I've uh, jumped on this uh, uh, theory that Macedonians have been stealing or appropriating history from neighboring uh, countries, which obviously was welcomed in all neighboring countries. This generates daily comments from neighboring countries, from historians, politicians, from Macedonian citizens like Albanians or the people on the left who are undermining, humiliating, uh, dismissing uh, Macedonian history, Macedonian heritage and everything. Uh, so, you know, I'm not even counting the, the events, obviously. This, you could, it's safe to say that somebody comes out daily and... Uh, it says that we are a made-up artificial nation with no history, uh, which uh, has been appropriating uh, history from its neighbors, which is people who are confused and have no uh, idea who they are and what they are. It's, uh, it happens all the time now. This is just one of those things. Yeah, and exactly, yeah. And, 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 and of course... W you know, there, there's some things coming up. Uh, I recall um, seeing in the media not too long ago that the government issued an edict s stating that by the 12th of August, I believe, which is next week, uh, mm -hmm. all public all public objects in Macedonia, uh, institutions, sidewalks, whatever, anywhere where the mm -hmm. the Macedonian sun, the uh, Kutlesh, uh, the star of Kutlesh is mm -hmm. placed, has to be removed. Uh, and then... We, we haven't even got into the, the large, the, another issue, which is, is boiling below the surface, I think. Well, actually, two issues. Number one, the whole textbooks uh, that, uh, that the, Greek and the Greeks and the Bulgarians are looking at the school textbooks to remove, quote-unquote, irredentist history, etc., any mention of, of you know, Macedonia's history, etc. And then, then, of course, the issue of businesses and the whole issue of trademarks, yeah. uh, Macedonian products and things like that. That is yet to be determined, and all of that stuff. I'm, uh, I, there are committees and, and groups of you know of Macedonians and Greeks and Macedonians and Bulgarians that are meeting. Actually, sorry, it's just the Macedonians and the Greeks on the on the trademark issue mm. that are meeting. Maybe not now because it's August and people are on vacation, but all of this is is ongoing. It's coming up. It's going to be continued uh, humiliation and continued degradation of the Macedonian name and the Macedonian identity. Uh, and Zoran Zayev continues to get away with it, and, um, well, it, it can continue. Yeah, uh, th this uh, particular comment, uh, this particular item of uh, nationality being declared as Macedonian was supposed to be the big victory for Zayev in the Prispa Treaty because he insisted that uh, with this, the Greeks have accepted that the adjective Macedonian will be used for the ethnic identity of Macedonians, although in a longer form, Macedonian forward slash citizen of the former, uh, of the whatever, with the name they're pushing on us this time. But, uh, you know, it makes <laughs> right. no sense to, that this is ethnicity because uh, it contains the word citizen within the longer formulation. 
and uh, sure right. enough, uh, this this specific document, which we are discussing now, which had the five forward slashes, it is uh, it uses the word državianstvo, uh, and this is in Macedonian. It's clearly translated as citizenship, not as nationality or ethnic identity. So, you know, we mm -hmm. never had any idea that uh, this item will be used for to guarantee or prop up Macedonian national identity. Greeks immediately said, no, you're translating the English word nationality into ethnicity wrong. It's just citizenship. Right. And Tsipras would insist before his public that he never accepted the use of the word Macedonian for the Macedonian nation, whereas Zayev insisted that, no, actually, he accepted it. And he agreed that this will mean ethnicity. And with the new Greek government, obviously, it's, it will be clear where they stand. If in some other document, uh, official document, we try using even this longer form for something that will be clearly defined as ethnicity, especially now in the coming census, you know, Greeks will obviously object to us having a census in which uh, one point, I don't know, four or five million people declare themselves as ethnic Macedonians, even with the forward slash continuing with the new, with the name of the country. Um, so um, this was supposed to be the, the victory, the big win. And clearly right. we see these past few days that it's actually uh, just uh, something Zav's peer machine quickly, frantically came up with just to make the, the tree to look less horrible than it is. Right, and uh, interesting, uh, two points on that. Number one, uh, maybe we can, uh, it's kind of, uh, if you like your identity, you can keep your identity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not so fast. Um, but the second point is, I went back and I reread um, Zayev's speech uh, at the Alinden celebration last mm -hmm. week. Um, and I thought it was interesting, if you, if you read the whole speech, uh, he, he does use the adjective Macedonian, at mm -hmm. several points, talking about the Macedonian language, yeah. Macedonian flag, Macedonian his history, perhaps, things like that. He also mentions uh, the Republic of North Macedonia, etc. And, and I'm, I'm, um, right now I'm, I'm kind of plagiarizing for myself because this is in the article I'm going to write next week. Um, I don't know if you can plagiarize yourself or not. Uh, uh. But anyway, <laughs> um, I, you know, the, to your point about the Greek government, at some point they're going to uh, scream bloody hell about all this, mm -hmm. about him using that term Macedonian. And I think Stevo Pendorovsky did it in his remarks as well. Uh, because, you know, according to the, the Prespo agreement, and I have it right here in front of me, uh, he, he can't say that. So, and I think, this is just my own theory, that the Greeks are kind of keeping their powder dry, so to speak, right now. And they will bring that up at the appropriate time when it comes time for um, them to agree to if we get to that point, to open a session talks with the European Union. You know, we know that, that France and the Netherlands and the Germans and some others are, are thinking, well, we'll see in October, that's the date everybody keeps throwing around. And I just have a gut feeling that perhaps the Greeks are going to kind of wait until then and say, um, oh, one more thing. And they're going to bring yeah, things yeah. like that up. So. Because, again, Zoran Zayev is a politician, so in that speech that he gave uh, on Elinden, he's using, he's trying to have it both ways, and he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth, because he is a politician, and that's what politicians do. Sure. Um, leaders, uh, you know, statesmen and leaders don't do that, but politicians do. And he's not a statesman, he's not a leader, he's a politician. That's it. Uh, so, um, anyway, um, I guess we will uh, kind of have to wait and see on that, and see what what, uh, as, as we said, you know, this, this happens weekly, it seems, that there is some sort of mm. um, uh, uh, problem, quote-unquote, with the word Macedonian. Uh, and it's, it's the government that is, uh, that is uh, the government of Macedonia that is creating these problems. Sure. I mean, the way it's going to work out is, uh, obviously, the, the new Greek government is not, uh, uh, is, has agreed to agree to the agreement for a period of time. Right. And uh, they're not uh, going to do anything significant at this point uh, regarding the Prespa Treaty. But then he wants, so obviously in this situation, he wants to keep the, uh, a low profile on the issue. But then it's going to become... Uh, Mitsutakis, you mean? Yeah. 
but it's going to become yeah. politically opportune for Tsipras to expose it, to, to elevate the issue at yeah, any point. point when, uh, you know, he wants a small boost in uh, his own ratings. He can just point out to any of the speeches you mentioned by Zaya for Pendarovsky, who are obviously using the word Macedonian for the ethnic Macedonians because they insisted that uh, we, that this is a concession they got from Greece. And then mm -hmm. Greece agreed to this, and uh, Tsipras will just, uh, whenever we use it, I'm, I'm sure Greek diplomats are uh, keeping tabs on this, uh, on oh, Macedonian abuses and violations. <laughs> I'm making quotation marks with my fingers of the yes. Prespa Treaty, and they're gonna, and Tsipras is going to use this. This is inevitable, and he's gonna create trouble for uh, Mitsotakis, and Mitsotakis is gonna have to react and respond. This is. It has always been yeah. an okay. internal. We're, we're aligned on that. We're... It was always an internal political issue in Greece, and now, re as of recently, in Bulgaria, it was never purely a, a, a bilateral issue between two countries. Right. Yeah. And and of course, and then this uh, continuing on the the issue of, of identity, um, because I noticed I saw a, a, a media article that where the Croats are uh, referring to uh, Macedonians mm. as quote unquote North Macedonians, and and then going back to again to the article that I'm currently writing, um, I'm, I'm keeping a, um, a running tally of not all but as many as I can or, or as many as I can find instances in the in the media primarily, but not just the media but you know think tanks and others where individuals or the press or others use the the term North Macedonian, North Macedonian people, North Macedonian capital, North Macedonian uh, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. currency, etc. And so, and, and this is an issue that I know that we have discussed on this podcast and we'll continue to discuss it. And it's an issue, it's a, it's a very legitimate fear of the Macedonian people and has yeah. been since day one on this, is that people are going to start to call you North Macedonians. And, uh, not, to, not to give away the whole article that I'm working on, but... <laughs> Matt Nimitz, if just, just to bring back Matt Nimitz from the grave, so to speak, um, has, has basically said in an interview he gave with uh, Deutsche Welle uh, mm -hmm. this spring, he said it's not a problem if people refer to you as North Macedonians. Uh, you know, you'll get over yeah. it, they'll get over it, and you'll work it out. No, it is a problem. Yeah, of course. I mean, he doesn't care. Nimitz clearly no, stopped not. caring a long time ago. He, he would insist once... Once uh, every now and then, that uh, it's not going, you, you know, you're, just like Zav says now, you're going to, we're going to uphold and preserve your identity. But no, it's not. It's not going to. He he doesn't care, obviously. And uh, uh, these these insults and uh, uh, humiliations are going to continue until there is uh, a backlash in Macedonia, just like there was one in in Greece. Well, yeah, you bring up a good point, uh, and I think this is something that uh, those who, and granted, of course, it's August, everybody's on vacation, uh, fine, we'll give them that, everybody gets a rest, uh, but come September, when people are back, there needs to be a backlash, and that backlash, we're not advocating um, violence or anything like that, for the record, of course, but uh, protests on the street, and people coming out and saying, we're mad as hell, and we're not going to take this anymore, and uh, that is going to have to happen, that seems to be the only way that things really that that's the only way that you can get things moving in Macedonia is through protests. Yep, and uh, elections. I mean, we will have elections. Oh yes. Apparently soon, maybe April or May, and uh, this could prove decisive. We yeah, could see a uh, backlash there. Yeah. Well, they're they're gonna you know the the opposition is gonna have to get a little more organized on that. Um, I know our friends in Boycott Tirum are still. Um, Still think that that they have the magical answer, although I don't know what that magical answer is. Uh, I don't think they know either. Uh, mm. So right now you've got one opposition, and um, I think everybody's going to have to get behind that and support it, unless, of course, they want to continue giving away the identity. Um, people are going to respond. I mean, this is uh, it's going to be something. Maybe an, yeah. uh, an economic downturn. Maybe somebody was hoping for something and. Uh, didn't get it a job or you know some uh, kind of perk from the government or whatever, and then they're going to identify with something that happens, uh, uh, you know, to channel this this anger. They're obviously not going to say. I was expecting that Zaf is going to hire my my son, and he didn't, so I'm going to vote against him. Obviously, people are gonna gonna latch on to something more 
you know, w- w- worthy uh, of, uh, of being raised as an issue, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be one of these uh, humiliations which are being served practically every day. Yeah, well, speaking of, you bring up the issue of an economic downturn, and that kind of previews my farmer's pick, which I'll warn you is not a happy farmer's pick this week, but we'll get to that shortly. Um, but you bring up the issue of money, and, and that leads me to our next uh, topic, uh, Svetin, mm-hmm. which is the continuing and growing scandal of Boki 13 forward slash uh, Katica Yaneva. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and uh, Branko Geroski, the journalist who uh, started revealing this some weeks ago, and uh, which led to Boki 13's arrest, continues uh, with his uh, reporting talking about, so the the latest I see is this, the quote-unquote, the International Association, which is the quote-unquote charity that uh, Boki mm-hmm. 13 set up. Uh, so what what can you bring us up today and on the latest on, on that? Ah, well, uh, I mean, there's, again, we are uh, still in a stage when things happen daily, but the mm-hmm. big uh, movement uh, which we are seeing is that uh, this thing is developing along the lines which... We discussed the last episode, which is it's becoming it's turning into an intra SDSM fight between uh, uh, one faction, which is still being defined. Uh, it might include the uh, Zaev, but not necessarily, and another faction, which is obviously Shekerinska. Shekerinska is the primary target of uh, the reports uh, about Boki 13 so far, and. Uh, this is being raised by this journalist, Branko Girovsky, uh, which uh, who we know well, but uh, more importantly, Girovsky was uh, obviously briefed and uh, given insider information by the prosecutors who uh, did the job on uh, Boki 13 uh, and the other guy who was arrested, uh, Zoki Kicets. Mm-hmm. So um, clearly, this is who Girovsky is going after, and by extension, who the people who briefed Girovsky, who gave him the necessary information, who are obviously close to the prosecutor Vilma Ruskovska, who began the, who ordered the arrests and the overall investigation. So these are the, who this group of people are going after. Girovsky makes, uh, puts in an obscene amount of effort into insisting <laughs> that uh, he does not consider Zayev guilty of any crime, that Zayev right. didn't know or couldn't have known or whatever which is obviously very uh, unbelievable, uh, right. unlikely. But Gerovsky is trying to protect Zaev, but uh, also uh, is opening a, a major front line with Shekerinsky, who, who is much more important than the previous other politicians who Gerovsky was discussing, who are relatively low-level SDSM officials, these Kiki and Friki, allegedly... The, the deposed secretary general of the party and one of the deputy leaders of the parties, um, they are uh, not that important to break the party in half, but going after Shekerinska definitely is. I mean, if you try to go after Shekerinska, you better not miss. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we have a good old-fashioned uh, uh, faction uh, war within SDSM within and between the members, so an intra-party warfare. And, of course, uh, Shekarinska is the um, Minister of Defense. Uh, mm-hmm. Macedonia is uh, on track right now to become a NATO member. Um, I don't know if this scandal, if this brings down Radmila Shekarinska, if, uh, if that's going to have any effect on Macedonia's NATO membership as each NATO member country uh, ratifies the, um, uh, what is it, the accord, the protocol, um, we'll have to wait and see on that. But you're right, you, you, you make a very good point about about if you're going to go after her, you better make sure you hit the target because she is a very powerful player within the citizen. Mm-hmm. Definitely. She, she, has, she is showing some sign of pushback. She is giving conciliatory comments that she knew nothing about uh, nothing and uh, uh, that uh, this is all idle talk. Uh, she's obviously trying to Elevate Vemer or Gruevsky as the as the as, uh, the target of her response, trying to you know maybe bring SDSM people together over a common enemy. But she also 
uh, basically we're, we discussed this um, Ordanovsky scandal, this uh, Indian, uh, the stolen Indian air uh, pollution measuring device. Uh, oh, for, right. That's the innovation fund of uh, Zayas, right? Yeah, for which uh, uh, 250,000 euros were paid, uh, were allocated from state funds for uh, or the Ordanovsky journalist family. And the guy who runs this uh, fund, which is being used to give money to uh, you know, friends of the SDSM party, uh, its members, its uh, activists, supporters. The guy who runs this fund is very close to Shekerinska. So basically, oh, he gave uh, uh, Jovan Despotovsky is his name. So basically, him giving money to Ordanovsky uh, quickly materialized last week. Uh, all the other journalists from One TV are gone on this issue. They're not defending Boki, they're not defending Katica, nobody. But Sasha Ordanovsky, whose brother, won the contract. Uh, Ordinowski, right? Yeah, he is back in the television. He says, I'm going to run a, do a uh, uh, news, the evening news all by myself, gratis. So wait, this know, is, sorry, this is, Sasha Ordinowski is saying this? Yeah, yeah, Sasha Ordinowski is now running, he's now doing the defense of the television, uh, which we saw famously in the, in 2010, 2011, when A1 was being closed for, uh, right. over its fraud and uh, tax evasion. So now Ordanovsky is doing this approach. He's obviously well funded, well paid by uh, Shekerinska specifically in this case, a close political ally of Shekerinska. So he's now setting up a platform to which, you know, you can already sense that the tone of the comments, th this is going to be the pushback. This is going to be one of the uh, lines of pushback. Other SDSM media outlets like Tilma or uh, 360 degrees uh, around uh, Vasko Papitrovsky and Atalsat, they're attacking Katica, they're um, going to, uh, they're trying to bring her down. But, you know, it's pretty clear that some of them, especially this latter outfit, uh, the 360 degrees, they're not going to go against Shekerinska. So, you know, we're going to begin seeing some... Uh, this, fa this uh, faction within SDSM uh, uh, is going to manifest among its journalist supporters. So Gerovsky is attacking Shekirinska, Tilma is attacking Katicayanova, while uh, Ordanovsky is preparing to fight back to protect Shekirinska, and uh, the other major outlet which was involved in these revelations, uh, the Alsat TV uh, linked the 360 degrees, they're definitely going to fight for Shekerinska. They're going to try and protect her from whoever attacks her. The big issue now is whether Zayev will be seen as the organizer of all this, whether it will be seen that Zayev is trying to bring her down and Gerovsky is making every possible effort to make it appear that it is Zayev who is uh, commissioning his articles. Mm -hmm. And which, by definition, means that it probably isn't Zaf, but it's definitely somebody in SDSM, uh, because uh, you know this is these are the SDSM people, SDSM journalists, using SDSM ava uh, information avail available to SDSM prosecutors. Um, so this is an inside job, but it's one one faction. The targeted faction is clear, but the other, mm -hmm. the attacking faction, is still being defined at this point. Wow. Well, a couple of things. Number one, it, it, I, I kind of want to write a, a, a synopsis or a treatment and maybe give this to Netflix uh, for a multi-season, <laughs> multi-episode uh, drama. Um, That's but, my fire uh, respect. But if, if, of course, if you if you follow the um, if you follow uh, the news about Netflix right now, that's maybe not a good idea because uh, they seem to be going yeah, yeah. down n n worldwide and here. But that's a whole other subject. But um, I want to bring up the issue of timelines because it seems to me sitting here in uh, early August. Uh, there's a couple of things that we need to be paying attention to as this thing unfolds and as everybody's on vacation. Uh, apparently, Katica Yaneva was in or is in Greece, and at least she was photographed down there with mm -hmm. her son on vacation. So uh, apparently she can travel without restrictions. Uh, but we know that the law on the, uh, the special prosecutor, a new law has to be adopted by the end of September. I think that's when the current law expires. And there's yeah. a there's a issue going on between Sotosim and Vomero over that. Uh, and of course, the international, the Western elites, primarily the EU and the United States, want, basically, uh, we saw Phil Rieker and Johannes use Balkan Tactics Han there uh, a couple of weeks ago saying, you, Vomero, 
need to agree to what the government proposes, which of course is ridiculous. That's not how democracy works. But anyway, that that's on the timeline. Uh, that's coming up, um, and um, so both parties will be talking about that when they come back from vacation in late August. Number two, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Bulky 13 was placed under detention for 30 days initially, mm -hmm. correct? And yeah. we're coming up on that 30-day mark, I believe. Yep. I, I want to say it was July 20, somewhere around there, when he was initially detained? Uh, that... 15th. 15th? It was the 15th, I think. And okay. these things, the way Macedonian judiciary works, these things can be or does uh, renewed uh, a couple of times. Right. Okay. So we should be we should be looking out for that. Uh, then that's going to happen, obviously, within the next seven to eight days. If it, if the ten, if the detention is going to continue, um, mm -hmm. and I think it would, uh, as well as his uh, his sidekick associate, who's also in detention, correct? Ah uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Zoki Kitschet and yeah. Katitsa, she weirdly went for a vacation in Greece with her son, mm -hmm. her adult son, and uh, you know which... that's a bit odd. Well, it makes it uh, possible that they may not be coming back. <laughs> well, that's going to be interesting to see if, if that happens. I mean, obviously, if she doesn't come back, then the whole thing is, you know, then then it's over uh, for her, for the government, for the special prosecutor's law, etc. Uh, that's just mm -hmm. an absolute admission of guilt if she doesn't come back. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know if she'd be that stupid. She might be. Um, we'll have to see. What other things are on the timeline here? So, when does... Um, the government, I assume, is on vacation. One could say the government's always on vacation. Uh, yeah, this one especially. <laughs> they, yeah, they come back at the end of August, I think. I think. Uh, yeah, is it, yeah. Par has, Parliament has, should be back. Parliament has a new uh, session of Parliament been scheduled yet? Uh, end of August, they should re uh, reconvene for new the session of Parliament. law yeah. special prosecutors. Right, okay. Uh, what else on the timeline? Uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, Vimera came out with uh, a date for early elections. Uh, they okay. said April and, or May. Zayef insists on elections in uh, October, which is just October two of months, 2020. Uh, uh, yeah, ahead yeah. of the uh, regularly scheduled elections in December right. 2020. So, uh, you know, Vimera said, okay, fine, we accept this as a basis of negotiations. Now move the date to the normal date of spring where. Uh, and, uh, you know, if this is accepted, and it is going to depend on the outcome of the October European Council on uh, where we expect a date for accession talks or not, That's and on October. what happens with Katica, right. yes, this yeah. October. So if elections are agreed for April, uh, then Zav should be residing around the new year, uh, and the new SDSM approved Prime Minister appointed, and uh, Avamura approved... Uh, Interior Minister and a few other departments appointed as well. That's right. Yes, that's that's the new um, quote unquote the new um, agreement as of the last elections. Excuse me, in 2016. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's quite a bit to be uh, to to be monitoring and, and looking at. In the meantime, uh, and back on the issue of money, I did see something where Zayev had promised five billion euros of investments. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's what I. That was my initial reaction as well. I laughed. <laughs> um, because I don't know where this money's coming from. I don't know what it's going into. I saw something about infrastructure and and uh, maybe education, something else like that. Um, is he uh, is he on? Is he? I, maybe we should be concerned. Is he smoking something? Is he on drugs? Um, where did he uh, come well, he, he runs a marijuana factory. So oh, sure. that's true. <laughs> that's oh, that's true. Yes, and I think I wrote about this last week. The the he's in the cannabis and his his family and his companies yeah. are involved in the cannabis. Uh, marijuana industry there, and the Serbian mafia is getting involved mm. in that as well. Um, yeah, just going to the factory floor should get you high, <laughs> even <laughs> even higher than he normally is. I don't know what he's. I mean, Vimer is uh, believes that uh, you know, as every infrastructure project is being slow rolled and uh, delayed because, I mean, one, they're incompetent, and uh, two, the contracts were. Uh, clearly, you know, agreed and done by Nikola Gruevsky, and uh, it's very difficult for them to get any political uh, benefit out of opening a highway, which was, I don't know, like 70% built by Nikola Gruevsky. You just turn out silly. You just end up looking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, so Zaev wants his own project. So one of them is this huge construction of a clinic, which is positioned closer to Kosovo, basically, than to, than to most Macedonians. And uh, hmm. it's Presumably one of the 
payoffs to his Albanian voters. Uh, and he, you know, he inflated the price tag from like, uh, I think it was under 100 million to 500 now. So basically he wants to project and uh, approve the contractors and everything on a huge project of half a billion euros, uh, yeah. grossly oversized. And, you know, this is what he wants to do. So he's obviously counting this into the 5 billion, but I'm not sure what else. I mean, other than the highways, which Gryevsky started, there is really very little else. I mean, I don't see any, I don't see much work in gasification, in the gas network. Uh, uh, there were several smaller, like motorways, which Gryevsky also ag agreed and, you know, planned and... Uh, I don't see them being built either. So, um, but the Vimmer is expecting that he's going to slow down on in infrastructure as, as he is, that this is going to, mm -hmm. and because these, these funds are all already planned into the budget, if you don't spend them, you could theoretically borrow less, reduce the borrowing component, but that's not going to happen with this government. Uh, more likely they're going to try and borrow the money, but then, uh, around the end of the year, they're going to say, well, look, we have all this money in the budget, even though it's borrowed unnecessarily. And our infrastructure plans are not uh, coming up, are not uh, working. So we're just going to uh, rebalance the budget. And Zaev is now the finance minister. He appointed himself. Oh, so right. he can yes. propose, propose a new budget in which uh, these money are going to go to farming subsidies, welfare, uh, you know, things which are directly used to bribe and uh, bribe voters and buy their votes. So this is what Wimmer expects him to do. Just in time for the uh, elections, he would plan out elections. a few major right. welfare, welfare payments in time for the elections if they're held in April. So he would be making payments all throughout uh, the spring. Right. And of course, nobody will say anything about that because that's, uh, well, that's using Balkan tactics, I think. Um, yeah. Now, in, in this, has there been any talk? Because I know that when, when he came to power um, and he spent the first two years, he and Zoran Zayev and his government spent the first two years changing Macedonia's name and its identity and the repercussions of that are going to be with us for a very long time. But he also talked about bringing in foreign direct investment. He threw out some fantastic sums way back mm -hmm. when, and I've got it in my archives. I can't remember what it was and whatnot. But that seems, just from my own perusal of the news and, and whatnot, uh, that seems to have just kind of fallen off the edge of the earth. Uh, he's not talking about it. There's, the FDI is not coming in. Obviously, investors, you know, uh, foreign investors want to invest in a stable country, and they look at things like the, the, the scandal that is going on. Mm. Uh, and... They're thinking, well, you know, rule of law is important to us if we're going to invest in this country, and the rule of law doesn't seem to be very uh, stable there. Has, has he said anything lately about FDI? No, no, he, he's not talking about this. And as you said, I mean, the nature of the scandal is that even relatively mid-sized is the same people and their supporters in the media, and Boki Fertin is definitely a mid-sized uh, He used to be a large size. Supporter. Yeah. Oh, but I'm <laughs> yeah. bumped. Sorry. <laughs> he had this surgery in the, in the in the hospital of the businessman he was blackmailing, and then he never paid for it. So now the hospital is is publicly publishing the bill for ten thousand euros for Boki right. and friend. Sorry for, the, for those get... for those who don't know what we're talking about. Boki thirteen used to be a very large um, man. I think I was the right he used to be a large man. Now he's now he had a or a small table. whale. Yeah, <laughs> he had his stomach stapled. So anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, if if these people are capable of uh, getting enough political clout and extorting money from you, from a from a relatively important businessman like you know very important businessman businessman here like uh, Jordan Kamchev, you know what's left for everybody else? You can imagine what's being done in smaller towns in uh, with smaller businesses and. Um, you know, this is extremely damaging for uh, for business. This is uh, your you, the, the prevailing mode now for businesses. Don't catch their eye. Don't let them notice that you're making money because you you you'll get in trouble. Then, mm. uh, I mean, they extorted money for uh, from a businessman who does construction and uh, coal mining in Bitola. 
they extorted money from Fiat Sanofsk again, if you remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, the university owner and uh, developer from Struga who was with Vemera, but then turned on them, uh, which led to him losing, uh, you know, uh, what he imagined would be easily overcome issues with the, with the development he was building uh, above and beyond uh, the permit he received. Uh, so um, he, he thought, he believed that he'll get away with it because he's close to the government. Obviously, he wasn't and he didn't. It was, uh, it was blown up with dynamite. And then um, he made a huge issue out of it. It was one of the wiretaps. Uh, Gryevsky is charged over this by Katitsayanova. Uh, Tsanovsky is waiting to collect money from the government. He's insisting on tens of millions in damages. And now it turns out that one of his relatives uh, from Struga, who is apparently his subcontractor, that he got shafted by Boki 13 for several hundred thousand euros. So mm. he gave the money to Boki and Boki was promising that I know this guy, I know that, the mayor of Karposh, I will give, give you one of the biggest, juiciest pieces of real estate near the Vardar River, which we are normally jealously guarding from development. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why it's not like a park or anything, but we are, you know, whoever builds there, he's going to have a huge backlash. So Boki was se selling a project to develop like a home for the elderly there. It's going, it, it was supposed to be like a charitable thing. So the, he insisted that the municipality has to give it for free and his friends with the mayor and then he insisted that the government is supposed to give money to build the whole thing because it's, a, again, a charity thing. And it's one of the most desirable locations in Karposh, in Skopje. And he took several hundred thousand euros from this developer from Struga, apparently, I believe, promising him that he, he will use his connections to give him this piece for commercial development, this piece of land, if he gives a bribe of if he pays him several hundred thousand euros. And now these guys want their money back and, you know, they're related to Fiat Tsanovsky. So poor Fiat, he cannot catch a break <laughs> under any regime. <laughs> he wants to be the politically connected developer and he keeps getting getting screwed. Oh, that's exhausting just listening to you. <laughs> yeah, but, but and try, try investing in this environment. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, that explains why there's no FDI coming into the country. And, no, uh, and and precious little domestic investment as well because it's all wrapped up in scandals and and uh, and the government and uh, everything else. Man, what a mess! Yeah, yeah, it's uh, really a, a serious atmosphere of uh, uncertainty. And even people who believe their SDSM and you know they thought, okay, I'm untouchable, nobody can do anything. Uh, about me, but they could now be caught on the wrong end of this interest, this feud which is developing. So you know, if you're seen as a Shakarinsky supporter, you can be whacked by the, you know, opposing prosecutors. Right. So they, basically two factions in SDSM have their own separate judges and prosecutors, and they're going at each other's throats. Right. Wow. Well, to our friends in um, France and Germany and the Netherlands, uh, especially the elected mm. officials who are considering uh, whether or not to grant a date for the opening of EU accession talks come this October. Uh, well, I hope that you all are considering all this and, and asking yourselves, is this, is this a country that you really want in the European Union right now? Granted, it'll take 10 years at least, even if they start accession talks, but... Uh, this is a, it just, it's an ongoing problem that, uh, you know, that's, that speaks to a larger issue, which we can talk about later. Uh, anyway, what else? Uh, we want to get to our farmer's picks here? Or you said you have something which is not, not particularly... Uh, Happy? Uh, yeah, joyful? <laughs> yeah, you know, normally, uh, Svetin, I like to, to... My farmer's pick is on, you know, some, some good news from Macedonia. And it usually, you know, oftentimes involves wine or culture or tourism or food or something. And, and just, to, just to make sure that our, our, our listeners know, there's, there's so, much, so many good things in Macedonia. Uh, and, and which is one, you know, many reasons why I love the country uh, and, and the people, of course, um, because of all the good things that are, that are offered there. And I, I so enjoy visiting uh, and I'm going to retire there one day. Um, it's the only place I can afford to retire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but speaking of affording, uh, so that's my farmer's pick. My farmer's pick is, um, 
uh, this uh, report that came out talking about average uh, monthly wages in the Western Balkans this year. And uh, no um, surprise, the highest, of course, is Slovenia, although they probably, mm. they probably um, don't like the idea that they're considered as part of the Western Balkans. Mm. Uh, but the report I have in front of me says the, uh, the salary for the average monthly salary in Slovenia is 1,113 euros, and the lowest is Macedonia. With the lowest of uh, 413 euros, which is unfortunate. Wow. And then you've got, you know, uh, you've got Serbia and, and the, even, even Bosnia-Herzegovina is higher, uh, believe it or not. Montenegro. They've pro- always been higher. I don't know why, but maybe proximity to Croatia, but they've always been Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. So in order, okay. it's Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Serbia. They don't include... Uh, Imagine the Kosovo. country oh, no, devastated actually, by war and uh, genocide. Kosovo, and more money actually, in sorry. Uh, yeah, as I read through this, Kosovo is actually ahead of Macedonia, believe it or not. Um, which is... Well, uh, the saying goes, što južnije, to tužnije, the Serbian saying. The more... You go to the south, the, the more depressing things become. <laughs> oh, anyway, well, that's my depressing farmer's pick for this week, is the average <laughs> monthly salary in the Western Balkans with Slovenia at the highest and Macedonia at the lowest. You got something better? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's uh, amusing. Oh, it's, good. Uh, I like amusing. Netflix, the Netflix pitch we were discussing. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's actually been, been, been written... Uh, there is a, a lengthy analysis of the Katicianova uh, scandal, up, updated daily with the latest news on uh, Republika, the English version mm-hmm. of the uh, Republika site. And uh, right. because it's, it, this is really difficult to follow, I mean, seriously difficult to follow. But this is a, a, a handy uh, click truth of everything that happened uh, with an um, overview of the colored revolution, the... Uh, Boki Fertin's arrest, the Gerovsk articles detailing the, the allegations around Katica and event Boki Fertin. So yeah, it's a it's a solid resource for uh, people interested in uh, in uh, what's happening in with this scandal. Why it's so both uh, uh, newsworthy with interesting, uh, colorful characters, and also why it could bring down the, the Zayev government. I mean, normally we would have something, somebody like uh, the well-paid uh, uh, Western-funded uh, news sites uh, uh, who cover Macedonia do something like this. They love doing these kinds of things for Nikola Gruevsky back in the day. Oh, yeah. But they're curiously quiet mm-hmm. about the Katicayanova scandal, so I suppose somebody else had to do it, and, uh, and I'm going to link to it in the, in the description of the, uh, of the video. Excellent. Good. Well, it's it's um, well worth reading. I feel like I f- almost feel like putting a whiteboard in my office and trying to, trying to sketch it out. <laughs> that would be almost impossible. Kind of like a, you know, the, like yeah. the detectives in the local police department when they're trying to to put together the crime uh, on all the relationship yeah, the, between the the deceased and and whatnot. Anyway, um, okay, let's the, the, the Pepe Sylvia chart. Word. Sorry, the, the Pepe Sylvia chart. <laughs> it's from uh, it's from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Very good. I'll put that image in there. There we go. We got we got a cultural <laughs> reference in there. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Good. Well, I know. Let's see. This is. It's been about ten days. You were doing some traveling the week before. I was doing some traveling and whatnot. So, uh, been about ten days since we've done this. Uh, we'll see if we do another one come this weekend or Monday, because this will drop tomorrow mm. Thursday. So um, anyway, we. Uh, we uh, we will, as a service to um, our uh, tens of the list, uh, listeners, um, uh, as a service to them, uh, we, we try and... Some of whom may or may not be Netflix producers. <laughs> we'll try and uh, get an updated podcast after this one, depending on what's going on. Um, hopefully, well, the nice thing about it, being a podcast, obviously, is if you're on vacation and you miss it, you can always go back and listen to it, so... Um... Sure. Uh, who, who do we get to, to play us in the, uh, in, in the Netflix yeah. oh, show? Oh, okay. So another cultural reference than the Glop podcast uh, that we, oh, yeah, we both listen to. So John Podoritz, uh, Jonah Goldberg, and Rob yeah. Long, their latest Glop podcast was uh, on the Glop movie and who they were going to get to play them in the Glop movie. Of course, they didn't have a script. I mean, they didn't have a, a premise for their, for their movie. Uh, so I guess we need a premise first. And maybe we'll, we'll save that for the next podcast, who we're going to get to play us. <laughs> well, yeah, we're going to... 
Statler and Waldorf through the through the series, uh, you know, sitting on the sidelines and commenting on what's happening. And you know, I, I, I'm 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 a fine with Woody Harrelson for my part. <laughs> I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be okay. Well, I'm gonna have to. I can't think right now on off the on the fly of who I uh, who I want to play me, but uh, we'll we'll save that for the next podcast. How about Bradley Cooper? We might get Lady Gaga to play Katitsana then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can have work. fun with this. I'm gonna. Okay, <laughs> now you got me thinking. I'm gonna be thinking about this all week long now. <laughs> I, okay. Well, well, we're open. Net, Netflix uh, hit us up. Sounds good. Okay, buddy. Yep, Take care. You too. See you. Till next yep. week. Bye bye.